The management is supportive. Uh, you have to ventilate the baby appropriately, not to overventilate. Hypocapnia can damage the brain as well. Restricted IV fluids is typical because the renal function may not be normal and fluid logging may happen. There is also a risk of hyponatremia from SADH. We should be careful with the temperature care. Avoid overheating. So the passive cooling concept is coming in, but we should be very careful that till we decide that the baby needs to be cooled, avoid hyperthermia rather than actively cooling the baby to a cool degree because cooling also drops many of the vital parameters. You should be careful that you're monitoring carefully. So the more important thing is to avoid overheating. So you may reduce the heating setting, monitor the temperature, keep it around 36 degrees or so till you decide on cooling. Don't cool down rapidly when you don't decide because the assessment of the baby's neurology will be affected by the temperature as well. Antibiotics are usually given where there is a setting and regular monitoring is important. Uh, control of seizures as they happen and CFM monitoring are very important. CFM is not essential, but it's a very good uh, support to the treatment and it's important for the seizure management because most neurologists suggest treating based on the EEG even if there are no clinical seizures. Therapeutic cooling is obviously a very important uh, parameter in terms of treating such babies. There are 11 RCTs in the Cochrane Review and there are more studies coming up as well. And uh, it's usually in moderate to severe encephalopathy with evidence of intrapartum asphyxia. Most of the studies use the same criteria we will discuss next. Therapeutic hypothermia is beneficial to term newborns with HAE and it reduces both the mortality and major disability with the number needed to treat of uh, seven babies to uh, gain one baby with improvement. So the benefits uh, outweigh the short-term adverse effects of cooling. The AAP statement as well as many other bodies like the CPS bring out statements which correlate mostly with these criteria. There will be subtle variations and you can have guidelines in your unit according to the setting as well. So a pH of uh, less than or equal to seven or a base deficit of more than or equal to 16 millimoles in a sample of cord blood or neonatal blood obtained during the first hour after birth. The history of an acute perinatal event is very important. So it should not be a baby who just was floppy at birth without any setting. It was elective cesarean, for example, then it's unlikely to be birth asphyxia related. A 10 minute APGAR score of less than five for assisted ventilation initiated at birth and continued for at least 10 minutes. So the need for significant resuscitation and a neurologic examination demonstrating moderate to severe encephalopathy is essential. So the sentinel event or an acute perinatal event and the neurologic abnormality plus the need for significant resuscitation and documented acidosis. The studies were using the amplitude integrated EEG as a criteria, but since more, not all units will have it, that's an additional parameter. So it's a useful tool. The key points to remember, it's very important to start it within six hours. And I described the passive cooling part. We should be careful uh, not to allow it to interfere with the neurological assessment. Where the progress is clear, don't delay starting of the cooling. Mild encephalopathy can progress, but if it doesn't and stays mild, it's still safer to maintain cooling because we don't know the impact on the future and you may get blamed if the baby has a neurologic injury in the future. So once you start cooling, that way you continue cooling. The target range is 33 to 34 degrees for 72 hours and you rewarm after that over six to 12 hours. There is no evidence and actually some evidence that prolonging the cooling may harm. Cooling in the extreme premature babies or below 34 weeks is not recommended. There are studies in the borderline preterm babies. The relative contraindications include severe pulmonary hypertension, severe coagulopathy, severe cardiorespiratory compromise. So if any of these happen, they are relative contraindications. So if, they, if the baby happens to be on cooling and these complications arise, if you are unable to manage them successfully, you can rewarm the baby before the 72 hours. So it's a life and death question then you can rewarm the baby rather than continue because it may worsen these settings. The controversies related to mild encephalopathy, though many people are erring on the side of caution in mild encephalopathy, there is no evidence that it may help. Of course, it's very difficult to measure because the outcome is already good in mild encephalopathy. The difference will be difficult to show. And borderline prematurity, 34 to 36 weeks, what do we do? Many people are erring on the side of cooling, especially in the babies who tolerate it, where the weight is more than two kilos. Uh, there was a recent article, the Helix study by Sudin Tayyel et al., which was very controversial in terms of saying that you shouldn't cool in the low and middle income countries. There's a lot of criticism and I have contributed to the criticism as well in saying that you shouldn't uh, generalize a finding. This was done in government hospitals, which uh, low income people attend. And there are many private setups in the same countries like Egypt, Pakistan, India, where you have better setups which can manage these babies similar. 
there is also a i mean a higher population incidence of partial prolonged asphyxia uh, where the asphyxia is not clearly documented so you cannot extrapolate the findings uh, where there is acute uh, total asphyxia where the cooling is more likely to help because if the brain injury is already established these babies had early seizures which indicates partial prolonged asphyxia so you may have missed the board by the time we present to you